Welcome everyone to the 2014 North American Collegiate Championship Semifinals. I'm David Freak Turley, your host for this evening's festivities and casting the first best of three with me tonight. Give me this guy. It's on my right, your left. Aiden Zyrene Moon. What up? Not much, man. I know we have some animals here. We got some huskies and we got some anteaters. Zat zat. Hmm. See, as a UCSD, I gotta hate on UCI a little bit. Are they the Trojans? No. It's UCSD. Trojan. What Trojans? No. right? Oh my gosh, really? What are Tritons. They? Tritons. I like how you got me saying Trojans and I got all <laughs> messed up. Somebody's the Trojans. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Guys, over the next couple of nights, we're gonna be bringing you the best college teams on the continent. It's a battle for $100,000 in scholarships and the first ever unified North American Collegiate Championship. Let's take a look at the bracket. Over 500 teams participated in the NACC. Tonight, we've got the top four. Up first, it's a battle between the Queen Gypsies from the perennial esports powerhouse, the University of California, Irvine, and the Blue Caster Minions hailing from the University of Washington. And in our second matchup tonight, it's Sergio's Dream from San Jose State University, U Beast from the University of British Columbia. The winners of tonight's two semifinal showdowns will then face off for that first ever true number one finish in Sunday's finals, which will also be taking place here in our LCS studio. And of course, we talked about it being the unified crown. We've actually got uh, uh, teams coming from a lot of different leagues overall. You've got two teams coming from Ivy Law, two teams coming from CSL, and a bunch of teams that didn't make it this far, but were playing uh, in an open bracket qualifier. Yeah, that was a big, like 500 team or something along those lines. We just said it. Open. Oh, good memory. Thank you. Yeah, nice job. But yeah, so we got, we got two Ivy Law teams, right? Two CSL teams. Yes. And uh, not that it counts as bragging rights for what's the better league, but unofficially it doesn't count as bragging rights for what's the better league. Ivy Law! Just, I don't know. I just felt like shooting out ammo <laughs> well, there. No, nobody came from the Open that we threw. Yeah. Which was hosted by Ivy Law. So if anybody had come from that, could they uh -huh. brag that Ivy Law still? I sure. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So it's even. So everybody here is, because I think these teams, one is from Ivy Law, one is from CSL. Yep. Then uh, UBC is also from Ivy Law. Yep. So it could be an Ivy Law versus CSL in the finals. Or but every game is going to be Ivy Law versus CSL at this point. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And you, got, you can brag for your league, right? Here, here at LCS, we just, I mean, oh, did TSM or Cloud9 win North America? LCS must be the best NA league. It's easy, right? It's even easier for us to brag about the league that we're a part of. It's when it gets international that it gets tricky. Because then you're yeah. like, come on, OGN, would you stop beating us all? <laughs> uh, but here, thankfully, the international goes as far as Canada. International, right? It, well, it is international. Intracontinental. In intracontinental. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I saw that word and I was like, wow. Okay, intra? Intra? Intra is within. And a continent contains many countries. Yeah. Are you, are you with me so far? Yes, I'm with you on this one. Thank, okay. you. Thank you, Professor Freak. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I got this Actually, one. Actually, it's Professor Kobe. We need him back. Here, Professor Kobe will be with us shortly. And of course, uh, we learn good here at the Professor LCS. We learn good. We learn very good, guys. We're really smart people on this one. Our grammar is top notch. Every like who's in your was the wrong who's in your. But you couldn't see it. We were just saying it out loud. But inside, we knew we were giving you guys bad grammar the whole time. Yeah. And so I want to talk about the teams again. Yeah. So we have two from the Ivy Law, two from the CSL, none from the Open. But it was a huge, just long season to get here. Mm -hmm. And Riot throwing this for the collegiate is incredible. Just yeah, it's awesome. Actually throwing sponsorship money at an eSport mm -hmm. is just big all in itself. Yeah. You bring a lot of visual, like a lot of uh, visibility to it. Yes. So they can go back afterwards and be like, look at all this money I won, Mom. Mm -hmm. Playing video games, it's worth something. Look at this free like couple of years of school. I wish I had that when I was competing because uh, my parents were not very supportive of my pro gaming career in college. They, uh, they didn't do very well, but uh, like, these guys got to be like, hey, look. And it's actually interesting. You talk to some of the players who are doing this Flappy Bearfish, the uh, AD carry for Pawn Gypsies. Um, for he's like Queen Gypsies. Pawn Gypsies Queen is their top Pawn Gypsies team. He, he is Pawn Gypsies ADC. Yeah, see? But. So it's fine. Uh, and he was like, yeah, I wanted to focus on school, but the opportunity to win a scholarship is, is worth it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for the, the, the extra sort of competition effort, even though I was focusing on the classes. But paying for school is pretty darn helpful. Yeah, and a lot of people have come up from the college scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, did you know? At Dignitas' <laughs> He's completely <laughs> no reaction. What did I know? What am I supposed to know? I was listening. You're supposed to like affirm that I oh. talked. Whatever. No, we're good. Uh, Dignan House of Jungler Crumbs attended the University of British Columbia. I did know that. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, Crumbs didn't compete on the college circuit, but there are a few NALCS pros who did. We're going to send it down to Kobe, who's standing by with a couple of them. All right. Thanks, Freak. I do have two of them right here, Kiwi Kid and Wiz Fusion. You guys started out in the collegiate scene, and you've made it all the way to the LCS. 
Let's start with Kiwi Kid, because uh, you have actually played in the Final Four of Ivy Low before. What is the difference between playing in the Collegiate League in the Final Four and playing with Team Dignitas? I think in the Collegiate scene, individual skill can carry a lot harder. But in LCS, it doesn't matter how good individual you are. At some point, you're going to need to know how to group and get objectives, because they're going to be worth way more than a uh, kill here and there. All right, and Wiz Fusion, you've actually played for one of the teams that's going to be playing today. Uh, tell us about your history in the collegiate scene. Well, I was actually going to be kind of building this team up from, like, in the start of this team, but I eventually uh, left for Team Coast. But I know that the players on their team right now are really, really strong individually. And, oh, the, the VCM team, which is uh, Blue Caster Minions. They were actually known as Purple Caster Minions. I don't know why they changed it. But, yeah, I think they're going to be really strong and should put up a good fight. All right, thanks. And both of you guys did a lot of work to get out of the collegiate scene into the LCS. A lot of other people want to make that jump. What is the biggest factor, you would say, between jumping into the LCS? Um, I think the majority is kind of luck, because you don't really, you don't, I didn't really give up any of my schoolwork to like, try to make it into LCS. I didn't like, take a semester off or anything. I think you just need to find that balance and stay in school. Yes, definitely stay in school. <laughs> sure, you might be only be able to get like three hours of sleep because I play like seven hours of league and then seven hours of studying. So that wasn't too healthy, but that's pretty much what I did. Anything to add? Yeah, I mean, he pretty much put up a good point. It's just finding the balance and making sure to stay in school. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think like if you, if you want to pursue it, you just really just have to work for it. All right, well, let's turn our attention to the games at hand because coming up is UC Irvine. They are a team that you have gone up against a couple times. They have some fans in that crowd here. What do you think about the first game that's coming up here? Um, I haven't really been following up with the collegiate scene lately, but we lost twice at finals to UCI. Um, B team, I don't know why you quit, but, man, that's tragic. And little Kevin, you guys are, like, probably the, be the best players in the collegiate scene from when I played. And you definitely have some personal stake in this match coming up here. What are your feelings? Well, I mean, I know the players. I think as long as they don't get frightened by the, you know, the stage, I think they're going to play well, and they're going to do fine. All right. Well, I have to ask you guys for predictions then. First, Kiwi Kid. Um, BCM and UCI. I don't know if they're playing against each other, but <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 2-1 uh, BCM, and then... <laughs> and hopefully they'll go to the Grand Finals and win that too. All right, thank you guys both for joining me. Now we're going to get the collegiate scene started here and send it back up to freaking Zyrene. Thank you very much, Kobe. And here we do learn good. Kiwi kids spend seven hours studying, seven hours playing, and three hours sleeping. <laughs> you short days. I know. you got to use that for other stuff. Maybe a little <laughs> eating, and maybe he spends a lot of time eating. He just, he just neglects. Well, I mean, maybe he was being secretive about the rest. He's got like a secret practice schedule or something. Hang out with The friends. travel time is hard. Yeah. He just didn't want to talk about it. Guys, let's get to it here. Our first collegiate semifinal series of the night between two of the favorites heading into this tournament. And as we heard that from Kiwi Kid, they are his top two. The undefeated Queen Gypsies, whose students all hail from University of California, Irvine, versus the undefeated Blue Caster Minions, who study at the University of Washington. Yeah, and while both teams have obviously had a great deal of success so far this year, the, team that have, um, the teams that have emerged from the student body of California, Irvine, have a track history of success in the esports arena. Exactly. The guys who have played from UCI uh, won the first three Ivy Law championships. Now they're trying to find uh, a win in the first ever unified crown as well. Let's take a look at the highlights from their quarterfinal win over Soil Boring from Urbana Champaign. Now, of course, they walked all over these guys in game one, but game two was all about Flappy Bearfish going ham. Yeah, and a Queen Gypsies that was down in kills but up in objectives go for a 4-1 split push with, Fat, with Flappy securing the first inhibitor of the game. And his team comes to back him up, showing the synergy that they've developed and the experienced shot calling that is brought to the table from the combined tournament experience. Now, Flappy gets caught out, but the quick reinforcement and thinking from Queen Gypsies quickly turns the fight into their favor. And now, UCI are three-time Ivy Law champions, but the only remaining member of that roster that took those cups is Pawn Gypsy. And at the start of the year, they were scrambling to field a new roster to defend their titles, and Flappy Bearfish wasn't on board at first, and he wanted to focus on school. But scholarship money through playing League of Legends is two birds with one stone, and with the new roster looking as strong as ever, the individual skill of these players is crazy, except for Bambi of the Forest, who thinks we're playing football. Gets a touchdown, though. It's worth at least six points, that UCI football team. Doesn't which, we, exist. which doesn't <laughs> exist. 
<laughs> Nor does it for UCSD. I was sad. Couldn't be in marching band. There's a rugby team, though. That's good. It's like which, football. Which is always funny, because they call it a try when you score. Mm -hmm. So it, even if you don't score, it's like, good try. But if you do score, it's like, good try. <laughs> so either way. It's a very supportive game. Yeah, it's good. All right, now, of course, as we saw, uh, one of the big reasons for success for Queen Gypsies uh, was the player, their star, Eddie Carey. Uh, Flappy Bearfish, who's now known as DK Bearfish. Yeah, DK Bearfish has been involved in the challenger scene since 2012. He played on Dirt Nap Gaming, then won Trick Ponies with his collegiate teammate, Pawn Gypsy. And after that, DK Bearfish played on the challenger teams, the Napkins in Disguise, and Double Buff, where he made it as far as the LCS promotional tournament. Yeah. And now he's looking to carry his team to the first ever collegiate unified championship. Yeah, we'll see if he can get his first win on this one. Of course, on the other side of the rift, though, is WizFusion's old alma mater, uh, the Blue Caster Minions. They've made the trip from University of Washington to our studios, and they're looking to keep rolling after a pair of very impressive quarterfinal wins over Solar from McMaster University in Ontario, Canada. We get to it starting with game one here. It's a pretty fun one. Yeah, and Alliance, he steals the dragon with a zap stopping Solar in their tracks and allowing Evertan and X3 to both finish the game with big zeros in the death category. Then in game two, X3 has another repeat performance dominating his lane throughout the game in CS. And this is another example of how a team that is down in kills but up in objectives really has all of the cards to throw down the death blow. We see X3 engage a clean fight, barreling into the base of Solar and causing a seven for zero exchange over two back-to-back -back fights that result in a ne Nexus explosion and another 2-0 victory for the Blue Caster minions. Yeah, really good performance by these guys. X3, who's, uh, by the way, known as uh, I Kenny U now. We're going to see that on his screen soon. But even though he went beast in the top lane, the statistical standout for the Blue Cast Dominions uh, was actually their mid laner, Evertan. Yeah, and Evertan, he ran with a new hotness. We saw it here today, too, is the mid lane Lulu in mm -hmm. both of his games. And interestingly enough, Queen Gypsy's mid laner, Bambi of the Forest, ran with Lulu in both of his games in the quarterfinal as well. So that's going to be a highly contested pick in tonight's match. Nice one. Learning from the pro. Of course you are. Now, of course, tonight we're going to look at the starting lineups. Spawning the blue side, it is the Queen Gypsies from UC Irvine. Pawn Gypsy in the top lane. We're going to wait for that cheer. Oh, yeah. Got the Zots coming out there. Pawn Gypsy in the top lane, your soulmate in the jungle. I feel a connection to him. Bambi of the forest in mid. DK Bearfish and AD Carry and Sirius as support. And we have the blue caster minions spawning on the red side for game one. It's a little ironic. Mm -hmm. And then top, we have I Kenny Yu, formerly known as X3 in the highlights. We have Kevin in the jungle. Mid is Evertan. We have ADC Alliance, and support is Haramur. Yeah, Alliance replacing Wiz Fujin. As we saw, Coast just took down TSM. So there's some kind of big shoes to fill. It's like, hmm, our old AD carry beat TSM. Alliance, what, what you got for us? Stole a dragon. We saw Stole that. a dragon with Zap. There's some good stuff in there for these guys. <laughs> and it's, it's, here we go, semifinals. Single elimination, best of three, on the big stage, which for a lot of these guys is a new experience. Yeah. For some guys, it's actually really nerve-wracking. It, it can actually completely hamper your performance. Some guys completely live up to the challenge and actually excel on this kind of stage. Yeah, and you can be the best player in the world, mm -hmm. but if you can't deliver on land, it doesn't mean anything. Because most of the, or I guess all of the really important matches are played on land. So if you can't deliver there, it's, your skill doesn't mean anything. It's a little bit less useful. We'll see if they can do stuff online and see if they can do it on land. Here we go, though. Queen Gypsies in blue first, pick and ban. You want to see if they target here, because one thing to keep in mind is I Can EU has been in love with Kha'Zix. And, and yeah. yep. Immediately take that out. Don't want that top lane roamer for him. We saw him dominate previously mm -hmm. on that champion in the top lane. I mean, it's just so strong. He would blind pick it, actually, in his, in the, in his like, CSL qualifiers up into the quarters. Played it both times. They would blind picked it on the blue side, uh, first picked it there. And he just, like, got to have this crazy amount of pressure. Plays champions that most of the top laners don't. Yeah, and that just shows the amount of confidence he has on that champion. If he's able to blind pick it, mm -hmm. and it was devastating. It, that was That's an understatement, too. Oh, he yeah. Wrecked with that champion. And Queen Gypsies, they've done their research and their homework, you know, studying for that final. They take that right off the field. They do take it off the field. So Kha'Zix, Lee Sin also banned away from your soulmate. So uh, Jungle's trying to get removed. The Wukong away from Kevin. And, you know, one thing to note about uh, Kevin as well is he's uh, the brother of I Can You, if yeah. I that properly. And so I feel like normally, like, top lane's an island, less so this time around. Yeah, because they're brothers, they're going to have great synergy with each other. And, you know, they're going to be really friendly. And actually, Washington, uh, University of Washington's team, or the team from there, yeah. they have a lot of inter-synergy, but they haven't actually all played together. Yeah. They, like, recently met all, all of each other, like, a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. In but real life. They've been in, like, yeah, but they've been in, like, around each other, and the bottom lane has been roommates, top lane is brother with uh, 
to the jungler, and Evertan is just a fantastic player. Stallone. Yeah. Sad. Well, he, he was like top nine in Challenger, I think. So he's, I mean, he can't be too lonely. Yeah. Well, I mean, this solo queue for a reason, though. That's true. Could have been doing. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he's got maybe he's got a friend, but doesn't attend. He yeah, could be cool. doing the whole time. You never that's, know. That's true. Uh, Pawn Gypsy, of course, first pick in for his jungler. The Vi coming through for Queen Gypsies. Uh, and Blue Cast is still to make their choice, but Thresh already locked in here. Yeah, that's a very gank heavy jungler. Yeah. And your soulmate's champion pool isn't the most diverse thing in the world. The Lee Sin is banned away, so he falls back on that Vi. And this signals to me that he's not going to just play a passive game, he's going to start ganking and getting his lanes ahead. Which is good, because in his previous games, he was very passive. Mm -hmm. And he would just sit back and kind of farm up almost like Season 3 meta type medios. Yeah. But this is actually going to be just gank heavy. We're going to see what they pick in the mid to synergize with this. Well, and you can see they've actually grabbed Leona for the bottom lane at the very least. So Queen Gypsy's ready for some aggressive plays. Starting at basically level 2, Leona has pretty much all the engage potential you want from a lane. So Vi can show up with that one. Siobhan in the top lane, not as easy to gank for. We've seen that turn around anyway. In fact, we saw that uh, when Coast beat TSM. Shivana, uh Vi worked quite nicely for them. Yeah, it, Vi works nicely with pretty much anybody that has some type of engage or, yeah. just, or gap closer, because then you just stampede people down. Mm -hmm. So It's going to work out for them. We'll see if they can do it. Blue Caster Minions, four picks in Thresh Ziggs. Already grabbed, but Renekton and Pantheon now here. So every lane, we've seen something from it. Yeah, so Renekton is going to win this top lane early. Shivana is going to scale with that. But I can use a playmaker. That yeah. is the type of player he is. He is going to want to roam. He's going to want to win that lane. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just try and crush that in CS. And we saw him previously when he was X3 in those clips. Mm -hmm. Dominate on Renekton in CS and then transition it into team fights, even though they were down to kills. Yeah, into playmaking. We'll see if their individual skill can make things happen early on. Last two picks come through for Queen Gypsies. DK Bearfish going to be on Lucian there. So Lucian Leona with a Vi jungle and mid lane. It's going to be LeBlanc slipping all the way down and picked up here. That's a little different than what we typically see DK Bearfish on. He usually likes the Tristana or the late game hyper carries. Yeah. And he's going for that early lane bully here. And also, Bambi of the Forest, Lulu's banned out. Mm -hmm. He's got to fall back. And we heard Kiwi Kid talk about Lil Kevin. Mm -hmm. The best, in my opinion, LeBlanc, LeBlanc player. LeBlanc. Yeah. <laughs> LeBlanc player <laughs> in LeBlanc. all of NA during Season 2 and the start of Season 3. He yeah. was incredible before she got her her buffs. Bit and of a one-trick pony, but... Yeah, they, they had that team, too. He was yep. on one-trick pony. Yep. He was, he was the pony, actually. Was he? He was the pony. And they that all just was... hopped on his back? Um, I mean, they kind of, like, rode alongside him. You know, like, you, you ever see, like, people on a ranch, like, hold, like, the leash and the horse runs around? You'd They're just kind of there. Just unleash him. Just let him go. And they never picked LeBlanc during the tournament, so clearly they didn't have the strategies in mind. Of course, the rest of the picks come through, and Thresh Draven is the bottom lane here for blue cast minions. And to me, that surprised me a bit, because the one player to be afraid of on uh, on Pawn Gypsies is Bearfish, Bearfish. is that bottom lane. Like, yeah. super good AD carry, and they're like, yeah, I'll play an aggressive lane against you. Let's yeah. fight. It's two really aggressive lane bullies against yeah. each other, Lucian, Draven, and it, they also have aggressive supports, Leona, Thresh. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a very intense matchup in the bottom lane, and I think this is going to dictate the pace of the game. Yeah. Because we have those top laners who are the passive farmers. We have some gank-heavy junglers. LeBlanc mm -hmm. can make those plays in the mid-late True. Late game. But bottom lane, with the fact that Bearfish is such a presence on the team, it's true. if you let him snowball, it's going to be out of control. So Kevin might not, have to, might not synergize with his top laner, his brother. Sure. Might have to bring it down to the bottom lane. We'll, we'll see where he ends up going with this one. As you said, he's got more presence than Festive Maokai, and we'll see if Lucian can make things happen there from Flappy Bearfish. DK Bearfish, my apologies. Yeah. Um, and the thing to watch for as well, because you talked about mid lane a bit, I've seen that lane go both ways, LeBlanc versus Ziggs. Uh, back in the promo tournament, I remember like waiting for Shifter to bring out LeBlanc as counterpick to Ziggs, and then got like completely just dumpstered by uh, Pobelter, who played Ziggs, pushed him out, and he never got to lane. He, like, he never got to do anything as LeBlanc. He was kind of on the back foot the whole time. Here in this one, I want to see who gets the edge on that lane. It's a very high-skilled mid lane. Yeah, and Evertan sees this coming, takes the barrier for himself, yep. so he doesn't want to get LeBlanced. Nope. He's like, nope, I'm going to stop that. I'll, you know, Satchel Retreat, as you love to say. Satchel Retreat. Ah, I love that, actually. It's a good name, it's isn't it? It's a really good name. <laughs> Sometimes he'll Satchel Charge. you see him like dunk somebody with the passes. Just get that final shot, get that distance. More sports being played here by these mid laners. Mm -hmm. We have the touchdown. We're going for the dunk next. Now we just need hockey. Oh. I guess we're going to have to wait for... Um, UBC. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for UBC for the hockey references. They did just win in the Olympics. 
Jad's probably happy. He is. He is as our, as our wow. only Canadian caster here. Blue caster minions already making their way through the jungle very aggressively. Yeah, but Queen Gypsies, they're all formed up in this bush here. They're going to rotate. They're going to meet each other. They're about to see each other. Hello, everybody. The fight has begun. Damage coming across everywhere. Who's going to go down? Bambi jumping backwards. Kevin taking a bunch of pain. Going back, though, as well. Kenny, who already used his stun. And BCM actually kind of losing this fight. They're losing in health bars. They're trying to flash away. The chase coming in serious with a nice stun. Everton trying to get away. First blood goes over to Bearfish, and the chase is still continuing. Flashes up. There's a couple of them. The dash is coming through. Bearfish, can you get another Q? Oh, they're all up is low. The Q damage. Ooh. The stun. Another one. An alliance has been disbanded. He is alone and sad, and two kills come in for the mid lane and AD carry of Queen Gypsies. That is a huge momentum swing for the Queen Gypsies. Not only are they ahead in gold, mm -hmm. but about a third of the crowd here today is from their school. So when you have the, basically the home team on your side, it's going to start snowballing. And so we talked about LAN earlier, and when you have the crowd rooting against you, it's not something the blue caster minions want. And that was not the best of invades I have ever seen. Not Walking exactly. Into the bush. A lot of flashes blown, though. It's true. And those early kills aren't worth as much. Mm -hmm. So if you take advantage of them sometime within the next five minutes, then you can actually cash in on that. So blue caster minions, it's really going to be up to Kevin to make some plays here. Well, there are two flashes up total. They're both on Queen Gypsies, but Pantheon, a great really aggressive jungler. See what All they can five do flashes from BCM gone. Yep. Every single one of them. Yep. Early advantage, early item lead for Queen Gypsies here. Up 800 gold, two minutes in, action packed right. right off the bat. We'll see what happens this one. Evertan. Here we go, versus Bambi of the Forest. Oh, he's shortened to Bambi Forest. Apparently the tag was too much for him. Uh, I guess Bambi Forest is still a cool name, though. Yeah. It's like a proper noun. <laughs> Bambi of the Forest. So the Bambi is the proper part. He's of the Forest. Yeah. Or is it just... Well, in this case, now title. the Forest is named Bambi. <laughs> it's like Yosemite <laughs> National so Park. It's so now Bambi Forest. He's Bambi Forest. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just reading the name on the screen. But look at how aggressive uh -oh. this bottom lane is. Damage is coming across. Level 2 on both of them. Serious. Not even taking much damage from Draven. Bearfish happy to go in this fight as well. Picked up potions for his trouble. Good so, start to the lane, freaking A. So if BCM had a notebook, it would probably say, don't feed Flappy. Yeah, too and late. And two minutes in, the, it's not working. No. He is incredibly strong right now. Lucian bullying around a Draven. Oh, in the Ooh. mid lane. Bambi doing nicely, though. Potion around Evertan. You're seeing him. Uh, of course, the barrier was already burned. It's going to be coming up soon. But already the early lead. Kevin got his red buff. Only level two of this Pantheon yet. Hasn't got another camp down yet. Yeah, and all of these players match up well in terms of skill level. Mm -hmm. But this early kill, if they can snowball this, man, up in the top lane, the Pantheon, he, Kevin's looking for something for his brother here. Well, he can leech XP to get level three. Um, does have the stun anyway, though. Let's see if Shivana turns aggressive. Another minion goes down. He can't quite sneak into that brush yet, though. Pawn Gypsy not looking aggressive yet. It's going to take a while for this gank to pay off, though. Yeah, it's such a large minion wave. Gypsy's probably going to clear it out fairly easy, easily with burnout. And maybe lose a couple. Well, we'll see. Your soulmate is low on health and out of potions. So even if I wanted a counter gank, she couldn't and is recalling. And uh, Kevin goes back, yep. though. So, so not even any gank here, even if the lane was going to reset. Oh, down bottom again. They're looking for the damages. I mean, honestly, Leona, Lucian, pretty painful lane. Alliance is staying alive, though. Still even has a potion in his inventory, so... Looks like Draven's going to be fairly safe catching axes. Uh, and honestly, like, aside from level 1, though, I got to say, as far as minion kills are concerned, as far as his lane is concerned, Draven picks doing okay. They're completely holding up to the lane. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't able to cash in on a big item, so DK Bearfish just has potions in his inventory, mm -hmm. which is just sustain for the yeah. lane. So if he can poke him out and then basically make it so he backs with, like, 1,400 gold instead of 1,550, that'll pay off for him. But that's just a whole hypothetical situation. But the sustain in itself is not combat stats. But True. if you play it right, you can turn them into something. And we'll see. The uh, barriers, of course, up for both AD carries. The exhaust uh, down for Harimer. So actually a summoner lead here for GQ. QG. QG. Get that one backwards. GQ. They're, they're, they look similar, okay? I know. I almost said it, too. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, the it's, good, it's good reading at the very least. Um, <laughs> And yeah, so these guys are just holding on for now. The mid lane, we've seen Bambi do a very good job early on. Actually forced the early recall from Evertan. He's picked up an extra Doran's ring, so he's sustaining on. And this gold lead is honestly staying at like 900. That we haven't seen it pan out yet. It's going to probably take the first big recall uh, from, the, from the jungler, from the mid laner, from the AD carry to start snowballing that gold lead. Yeah, and this 800 gold lead is spread out pretty much around everybody. Oh, down bottom! They have the jungler here. Got a bit of a jump in. Nice lantern and the stun there onto SRS. No flash available, though. Can Leona go down on this one? 400 health. 
Chive still in by Alliance, who is out of mana, but the damage might be there. Kevin still in the front lines, two hits to go, and they can't find it. Actually, Harmer's gonna go down. They trade one back into two versus three. Now Kevin's stuck in the front lines. Serious, two hits, and they don't even get it. So a two versus three gank, and the Queen Chief's come out ahead. That wow. was such a good play there by SRS, using his Zenith Blade to actually go forward. Mm -hmm. Applied the sunlight, great backup there by DK Bearfish, and he can stay because of the potions. And 2-0-1 and one on Lucian. He's going to be plenty happy in this one. I can't you and pa uh, Pawn Gypsy actually trading fairly close. It's going to be the engage now by the level 6 Shivana. Flashes in, Ignite still ticking. Can he force a flash? That will be a surviving Renekton. But level 6 early means a lane lead. Yeah, Renekton's very close to level 6. Your soulmate coming up top. If Renekton backs, they'll get some turret uh -oh. damage. But if he doesn't, uh, you're he gone. gets it. 315 gold. He's going to be happy with that one. Killing a minion on the way through, actually. That was style points. And, and it's going to be pushing to the turret. What a good start. They opt to not do damage to the turret, but instead to back and get them, and basically turn those into combat stats for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a great gank there. And your soulmate, like I said earlier, was a very passive jungler with his play. Now he's bringing it to the table with the Vi. Now he's level six. Ooh, yeah. Pick up the litter on the map right now. People's flashes are just now coming up. He can blow some with them. Well, let's see what they go for. Uh, yeah, Bambi doesn't even, re doesn't even retreat. Everton keeps juking himself with these ones. Doesn't get much harassed down. Seven minion lead in the mid lane. It's going to be a Fiendish Codex here for Bambi. Got another miss route, so he's not quite getting the harass down. And now he's forced to chuck some potions to stay in this lane. And level six coming out for Bambi before. He's going to get that blue buff handed off to him so he can stay here. Mm -hmm. There is a tiny bit. Okay, there, no. I was looking at the items. It's, it's negated now. In, okay. the bottom, in the bottom lane, they both have BF swords. Little bit of a sword lead. Maybe. Long sword. Long sword. It's pretty much what the kill's gonna give you is a long sword there. So that's what the lead is. The first blood giving him 10 attack damage. We'll see if uh, it's gonna mean much for DK Bearfish. Again, another fight in the mid lane, but Evertan is durable enough. He went, uh, started on Chalice, got the Null Magic Mantle, and he's just surviving his lane. Is the blue not gonna be handed off to Evertan? Unless he ults for it. He can ult it. Nope. So he wants the Grand Sky Falls. Kevin wants that mm -hmm. lower cooldown on it when he hits six, which is very shortly. Yeah. One or two more camps. And then he can start making some pressure on the map for his team, which is what they desperately need right now. Yeah. Because if they get to the point where your soulmate catches Kevin out and can duel him 1v1 in the jungle, then it's pretty much over and all the pressure will remain in the hands of Queen Gypsies. Let's see if they can find this one. Alliance still forced back. The Chalice done for Evertan anyway, so we might just survive. Hit ulted the mid lane wave to stay up there. Kevin's going to hit six off this camp. So that's going to give him the ability to ult in. We'll see if he takes this anywhere. Eight minutes, 30 seconds when he gets this. We'll see when his first Skyfall comes through. And he's going to rotate over to his red. Not show any cards just yet, because if you show yourself, it leaves yourself open to counter jungling. Mm -hmm. and oh, Evertan! There we go. Damage lands, but the Chalice giving him some decent resists. Evertan not falling away, but he's going to start chugging potions, and it's going to cost him more and more gold over time. And overall, all across the map, the CS is pretty even, except for the jungle of Evertan. Barrier used. That was a flash by Bambi, though, to make that happen. So two summoners burned for honestly not that much. And Evertan still has his flash available. Yep. He can make a play. If Grand Skyfall comes down, if he can bait out a distortion and possibly a mimic, then they could get a kill with a Grand Skyfall here. Well, Soulmate looks towards the mid lane. He's going to walk by a ward and can't quite see it. Pink ward's a little bit too far away. Soulmate does not know for sure that he's seen. Actually, he pinged right on top of where a ward might be, so maybe they do know. Yeah, and that's going to give Kevin all this information to make an intelligent decision. He can say, I'm going to go bottom. Oh, Evertan. All right, well, he's still got the flash, though. Is it going to be enough? He's going to jump over the wall. Oh! Clay Pigeon! Doesn't go far enough. Takes him out. Bambi the Forest getting revenge for that movie. Two, zero, one in both the mid and bottom lane. These are the two people you don't want to feed on this team or nope. get them snowballing. But regardless of that, Alliance has been holding his own in lane. He has. He has. He's even in CS and even in items aside from the Longsword. But man, Queen Gypsies, they're going to rotate that mm -hmm. mid kill into a dragon. 5-0 now the scoreboard. A 3,000 gold lead here for the Queen Gypsies, who all go to University of California, Irvine. They have a good start on this one. And they were one of the top favorites coming in. Blue Cash Green is also a heavy favorite. I know we talked to the players, and they were like, yeah, we kind of consider this one to be the final. We feel like the other team is the other strongest team in this tournament. So these guys have prepared for this one more than anything. Yeah, there are some sleeping beasts, though, on the other side of the bracket. True. With British Columbia and uh, San Jose. Mm -hmm. Both of them have very strong teams. San Jose is number nine in Challenger. Yeah. So they, they play together all the time, and it's the exact same team. Yeah, we'll see them in a couple of weeks anyway. Yeah. Even if they don't go too far here, we're going to see some of these faces. So clearly some very skilled players out there. Yeah, and 
like you said, everybody was regarding this pretty much as the final here. And oh, speaking uh -oh. of final, Ooh, might be what their a last flash one. play. Bearfish is going to be out of the water in this one, though. And what a solar flare onto three. Might still die for it, but the damage onto Harmer. Are they going to have enough there? You can see the health bars going low. They go in onto Alliance. He doesn't cash in, but Bearfish is almost there for three kills, but has no mana to chase. Oh my lord, that was so good. The solar flare, even if they didn't get any kills, that was a great play. But the pressure that Kevin is now creating on the map mm -hmm. is good for blue caster minions. Yes. They needed that play desperately, and they didn't give up a counter kill at all. But as I say that, here comes your soulmate looking for just that. All right, looking to find someone to hug. They're going to go in for the ulti on the Kevin. The damage isn't going to be enough. Stun comes up to the Bearfish. Has another block. Not going to matter. Kill comes up. Barrier not even required, but uses it for style points. I can you in the top lane. He's a playmaker. He likes to get the team Swinging with that momentum. Mm -hmm. Can't do it on this Renekton. Pawn Gypsy is holding toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and might take him out here. And they go in again. Ignite used again on IKNU. The Flash already burned there. Kenny, can he run away? Pawn Gypsy nearby. Lands a Flame Breath. One more hit will do it. Ignite goes back into Pawn Gypsy and says, Nope, I'm the Crocodile. You back off. <laughs> Crocodiles beat Dragons? Apparently so. <laughs> I mean, it. he's winning by 20 minions. <laughs> It's very, very close. They opt for different builds, though. More of an offensive build on IKU. That's mm -hmm. his style. Yeah. He wants to push the wave, get that team out as fast as possible so he can roam mid, help out Evertan, get him going. But up in the top lane, Pond Gypsy, he's going to have none of that. Chain Vest straight out, looking for the wave clear from just passive farming with the Sunfire Cave. And down bottom, like all across the map, taking out these pink wards. Yeah, they swept two of them right now. So uh, Blue Cashman is getting a little bit of the vision back here on this one. It is confusing calling them blue caster minions because they're in red right now. Yeah. It's just like, that's it, what they it only works though, half right the now. time. I wish they just renamed themselves between each game. Kenny, you're in a bad spot. Goes in, almost makes it into the Zigbomb, but can't do it. Your soulmate gonna get the kill on this one. It's another one for zero here in the top lane. And that Renekton pick not paying off so far. No, it is not. He's not able to do anything on the map, and he's basically flailing, saying, you know, get your stuff together, guys, because I can't do all the work. And nope. Everton tried to help out there. He almost had the Mega Inferno Bomb for the kill onto Pond Gypsy, but he's just way too fast. Burnout gives you that extra movement speed. Mm -hmm. He was fine. Played around it nicely. So here we are, 7-1 to one in kills, 4,000. About the lead here by these guys. And I want to see what they do with this one next, because the thing I always look at with, with I want to say like newer teams, right, teams that haven't been established on the pro circuit for a while, is how good can you transition into the mid game, right? We, t we heard uh, Kiwi could talk about that, saying, yeah, in collegiate, individual skill can take you a really long way. In the LCS, it's how good are your rotations, how good are you at taking objectives. I want to see how good these teams are at making the objective game happen. Gank coming into the bottom lane. Be a stun land, and they're going to keep on going forward. SRS in the front line. Kevin getting just obliterated, though. Bearfish picks up one. SRS not in a good spot. Alliance, can he cash in the stacks? Yes, he will. 638 gold for that one. And Bearfish on the wrong side of this fight. Two kills picked up. Will trade two back himself, but a lot of money going to the BCM AD carry. So the plan for BCM is we messed up. We gave Bearfish some early kills. Let's get them back. Let's get them on Alliance so he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and basically even the playing field. The Solar Flare there, the Solar Flare missed. It yeah. whiffed there. The stun came out. The Aegis of Zeonia was able to stun Alliance. I mean, sorry, stun Bearfish before it landed. So it was kind of a little bit of a misplay there. It could have been played better. Mm -hmm. But Blue Caster Minions took complete advantage of that. They end yep. up getting the cash in on Draven before he dies, which is extremely important. Absolutely. So. He just rolled in a lot of money for himself. Yeah, they pulled in, in about 600 extra gold from that fight just because of the uh, the Draven pass. Actually, closer to 700 here. Yeah. I can you, Pond Gypsy, still in a battle. Unfortunately, you're just seeing Pond Gypsy just dominate this lane now. I can you, down to 300 health. Can the chase come through? Burnout lands. Good stun, though, from Kenny Yu, and it's going to be Pond Gypsy forced away. Oh, but here comes Kevin. He does have flash. Goes for it. Stun, auto attack, red buff is on. One more hit to go till he picks him up. Q, and doesn't even need it. Swings his little lance in the air, and kill goes across. Goes for the Heart Seeker Strike, finds it right in the beast, the belly of the dragon. One of his scales was open. Goes straight for it. <laughs> oh, your soulmate. Oh, what a Q! Stops it up, takes him down. Your soulmate crushes him out right there. That was beautiful stuff. It's good rotation. He saw that Kevin was top, so there was no chance of a counter gank mid. Goes immediately there, evens up the kill with a counter kill. And I want to talk about a little bit more about that top lane. Pawn Gypsy went too aggressive. And against Kenny, you know, he's got that synergy with his brother. He uh -oh. came in. Uh -oh. oh, wow. Yeah, that's going to be a kill by Bearfish. And a beautiful stun onto Alliance. He's likely to not go anywhere. Can he find SRS? No, he cannot quite. 
one hit from cashing in stacks anyway. Yep. It's another two for zero down in the bottom lane. Queen Gypsy's looking really good. And there's 10 seconds on Dragon here. They might have to back before they can contest it, but they're going to get this tower. And that mid lane kill allowed Bambi to go bottom. The rotations on this team on mm -hmm. Queen Gypsy, you can tell that they play together quite frequently, and they have good communication even at land. Yeah, they're making they're making the plays work. They're not getting flustered by uh, by the stakes of the event, even though a lot of these guys are are new to the big stage. Really, only Flappy Bearfish, the guy. Well, I guess him and Pond Gypsy, the guys who've been actually playing on stages like this before, and they're they're firing at all cylinders. I gotta say, six one and two for the eighty carry though. Pretty good start to the tournament. Oh yeah, that's that's how you'd like to start out any game. Hopefully, yeah. it doesn't get any worse. But you just keep snowballing that. Yep. You end up like eight one or whatever. Eight KDA, pretty happy. That would be great. Everybody wants that. Um, but so we saw the Ziggs bomb from Evertan get used to check the dragon, mm -hmm. and Queen Gypsy was like, "We're too low. We have to back off." And after they got that bottom turret, this is going to be the next objective in their sights. They're going to have to find a way to clear this out. They have that pink ward. You know, but they just haven't made their way over there. They backed, they have the, those items, they have those combat stats, and Lucian going for a Trinity Force. So it's a Wise choice. Yeah, a little bit uh, delayed on. Usually we see uh, Trinity Force into Blade of the Rune King now. It's one very, of the builds, very yeah. Very popular build now. And people sometimes opt for the Bloodthirster. He probably said, I have 1650 gold. I'm going to get a BF sword. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Get that early lane pressure and keep snowballing that. Well, Bambi is still looking for Evertan. Not quite going to find this one. Has a two-level lead in the mid lane, though. That's pretty rough. Harmer is going to find SRS. Mando's going to come in, though. It's going to be really interesting. Lantern comes across. He doesn't want it. And there comes the counter gang. This fight has begun. The damage now across to Kevin on the bottom side. He's getting evaporated right now. Bearfish finding a bunch of pain there. But Alliance still around. Bearfish, can he be going down to this one? Nah, -uh. Everyone wow. just explodes. Huge kill credits going over. QG. There was just too much damage on this Queen Gypsy's team. They're going to clear out that wave with the culling and possibly get some turret damage here. Well, they got one minion. They got a little bit of time. Three turret shots till those all die off. But Queen Gypsy's from UC Irvine finally pushing in a little bit more. Evertan, okay, dodges that one and lands off the rubber ducky. So plays that one pretty well. But I got to say, uh, Southern California so far holding some pretty good LOL teams. And they're 15 to 4. But they're finding, they're not finding a lot of objectives in this game. They're just kind of killing people and saying, well, we'll take Dragon when it's time. We're going to look at that again. There. The Pantheon Grand Skyfall actually lands in the back line, and we see that Kevin is the main focus here. Serious. Once again, Zenith Blade to safety. Not as an offensive tool to get himself out of there and lock somebody else up. Great Vault Breaker there. Groups them all up. Mm -hmm. Double kill for Vi, one for Lucian. Worked really well. A little damage on Evertan. And Alliance as well kind of baited himself in. He ran and chased Axes down to the front lines, and then suddenly realized, oh, we're losing this fight? Well, yeah. I've already overextended, and yeah. uh, fell down rather quickly there. Had a good start to the lane, but... Even with the stacks cashed in, not having a great time after this one. I think that Kevin used his Grand Skyfall as kind of a... Like, he thought that they were going to retreat. Mm -hmm. Didn't know they had your soulmate there. Yeah. So the your soulmate was like, actually, we're engaging. And he was like, uh-oh. I'm Oops. in a bad spot. And they collapse on him. And your soulmate... Speaking of flaps, and here he goes. Look, oh, good flash by Kenny. He's going to get knocked around a little bit, still dashing away. There's the ulti coming across as well. So much CC. Used Armor and he is going to go down. 179 minions, but three deaths. This top lane still holding nicely. Yeah, and this was one of the lanes that Washington was extremely confident in. They thought that, you know, I Kenny you, he's number nine in solo queue challenger right now, mm -hmm. that he could hold his own. But that hasn't been the case. The bottom lane, oh, wow. Enough about that. Sirius going hard on Harmer. He's going to get stunned up and go down. Eight, one, and four for the Bearfish. He's doing a good job of this one. So he ate a full culling there. Yeah. All of that damage from, your, from DK Bearfish straight into him. Good kill there for them. And I'll, once again, <laughs> top lane, this is really something that was unexpected. Like, you see that Kenny's still up in farm. Yeah. He's farmed very well this game but he just hasn't been able to make the kills happen or to get out of lane. And now with that turret down, mm -hmm. it's going to put him even further back into the back lines and his playmaking abilities are now reduced. Yeah, he's now five, 600 gold behind his lane opponent there. Despite getting all the minion kills, just the gank pressure has been one-sided for the most part in that lane. And you've seen it go forward and forward and forward and forward for Pawn Gypsy here. So every lane now at a disadvantage, whether it's minions or kills, it's, it's Queen Gypsy's having a very good time at this game. Looking to keep the pressure going. Only 20 minutes in, but they are just slaughtering the Blue Caster minions. I think this entire game we've been like, it's only two minutes in. It's only five minutes in. It's only 20 minutes in. But a bloodthirsty this, game. This lead that they've made from the start, and they haven't given up. 
No. Like, you would think that somebody would get a little overconfident or something. And oh, Evertan. Well, they're feeling confident. Looks like it's not going to be overconfident, though. Kill comes across, but Bambi is low on health. Can Kevin find one more? No, knocked backwards. Oh, Leona's going to find the damage in. Kulig's not going to land. Bit of a missed shot there, but Flash still forced away. We did find another kill, and now they've got control on the left side of the map. And they collapse, and now this middle turret is in their sights, and they're ready to take this out. All five of them are in motion, looking for an objective, communicating as a team. Not sure where Siobhan's going to go, if he's going to actually try and pinch them off from the side. If they can find the fight, they'll go for it. But the turret's going to go down anyway. All three outer turrets now fall 21 and a half minutes in. These guys have grouped up now as five to look for turret number two right there. Kenny coming in from the side, though. Might be able to start a fight. Alliance throws out his Whirling Death to go ahead and clear that wave, but Kenny's here. Let's see, Root comes across, SRS on the front lines, getting really chunked down there. They're going to trade that one back. Kenny gets into the background. Now Pawn Gypsy, a little bit too far forward, taking a bunch of damage this one. He might go down, Ignite is on, but it's going to be a kill trader back onto Kevin. All the same, Pawn Gypsy lives. Bambi the Forest, one hit from Gone. Shutdown comes in for Alliance. He's starting to get some gold, but can he find anything more? Static Shiv not going to do much, but it's a uh, two-for-one fight. In the favor of BCM there. Mm -hmm. So Queen Gypsies, like I said, a little overconfident. Yep. I was waiting for a play similar to this because at LAN, you know, it really does get the better of you. You're kind of sitting there like you're pumped. We're winning. And then you forget that this is a team that is equal in skill to you. Yep. And you've just been taking little by little disadvantage. And right there, it really showed. We had the respawns from BCM come in. Mm -hmm. Evertan was there. I can you with the rotation. And now he's back in the game. He is going to be back in the game, at least a little bit here with a couple of assists. Get himself into a happier spot. Levels 13 to 13 in the top lane, so I feel like these guys should trade fairly equally. But to me, the only guy who's really stepping up right now for Blue Caster Minions is the AD carry replacement for WizFusion. That's Alliance. And he's 4-3-1 and one on the Draven. And we're like, hey, look, you went up and against a very hard lane. Your opponent in lane got first blood, and you're still putting up a positive score. Yeah, and on that note, Alliance also has a QSS third item. Yeah. So he knows that there's a target on his back from Queen Gypsies. Mm -hmm. He knows LeBlanc's going to come straight at me. Leona will probably solar flare me. And Draven's actually one of the easier AD carries in the meta currently to actually engage on it. Oh, look at that armor. Uh, yeah. Oh, goodbye. Wow. So uh, that was fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, QG's jungler should be Australian because you just got your soul, mate. <laughs> Lame. Great. The laughter said it was great. So apparently, yeah. oh, shut up. You laughed. Don't boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so they get, they get Turret this one. goes down. Oh. <laughs> Queen Gypsies. Oh, they're going to go forward. A bit of a slow. Not too much, though. Nice zone control there by Everton. Yep. Yeah. You're so mean. I'm still, I'm, still, <laughs> I'm still stuck on that one. You know, there's a, there's a reason his name is Everton. He just got hit with a solar flare. <sighs> <laughs> now, you, now you're just reaching for him. I'm just going to go ahead and put whatever. a support at you. Are you serious? Uh, <sighs> no, it doesn't even count. Yes, See, it does. No one even groaned for yours. Yeah, because it was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it was classy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, mid lane minions going down. Let's see where these guys go for it on the next one. Unfortunately, Flappy Bearfish, DK Bearfish, Frick. You were Flappy Bearfish for like two years. Why'd you change now? I don't I'm like know. used to saying That's like Amiscus and Support Daddy. At least he was Support Daddy first. Yeah. And then like went back and then back. So if that makes any sense. Um, but it's going to be the Dragon taking a bunch more damage there. More globals being taken over by Queen Gypsies. They're honestly not giving up much of anything. One turret went down off of an overextension. They lost the mid turret fair and square. It was their own fault. But they're taking Dragon Control. Uh, they have not given any Baron comeback chances. And none of the other lanes have been able to be pushed in. Yeah, and I can you, he's really realizing this pressure. Picks up a red potion right now for himself so that he can have those extra combat stats for a tiny duration and hopefully turn those into gold for his team as a whole. And mm. Pawn Gypsy. He, he's after Kenny, and he's down a level still. Well, see if he can find anything here. Ruin King active, used, and the jump forward. And he's going to dash, going to dash again. Panth gun in from the back. Punch oh. is going to land directly underneath that one. I don't know if it's going to be enough damage. Harem is going to show up there. Three versus one. Can Pawn Gypsy do it? Four versus one. They really like him. Oh. He's been hooked, and it's going to go down. Kevin takes the kill. Solar comes back across. Kevin explodes there, and so does Alliance. Yes, he does. Two for one in the engage. And now, Queen Gypsy's looking to keep pushing. Yeah, Bearfish not even involved in that, pushing the mid lane up. Evertan was there, and we had the buffer, blood, 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 yes. brotherly love. Ah. I was going to say, the brotherly love from Kevin sacrificing himself for Kenny there. <laughs> Man dropping straight on top. And now, QG, they're looking for a Baron. Now, see if they can get this one. Baron down to half HP. No smite available. 
for BCM. Yeah, there's no way Panther gets there in time unless these guys stop for a while. We've got Ziggs on the side. He does have ulti. They could have a chance to spike this one out, as unlikely as it might be. It's getting lower, and it's going to be smited away very successfully by your soulmate. It's going to be a very fast retreat there by Kenny Yu. It just made me... I was thinking of the... And I was like, well... The so what? The, the blah, 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 that I did. Yeah. You know how uh, people say zot zot for the sound that an anteater would make? Oh, I don't even It's a know. lot easier to chant than the sound that an anteater would actually make. They would go... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the, that's what they would do. It's like, let's go eat some Have you ever interviewed an anteater? Have you ever spoken to one? Do you know this? Yes, I have. They go... Blah, blah. Oh, I... Sure. They, they eat ants with their tongue. It's just I, I'm long aware. Tongue. Well, their name is an ant eater. Of course, they eat ants. <laughs> That's not even useful information. It's like, guys, I'm a color commentator. We're playing League of Legends right now. Um, that, that's it. That was, that was the <laughs> that level was, of commentary you just it? brought. Well, I was. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ant eaters eat other things too, I assume. I mean, Probably I wouldn't like believe bugs, it. Right? I wouldn't believe it. All right. Well, they'd be anyway, lying to me. We have chains coming in to harmer. Oh. Ah, uh, damage! Yeah, GG. wow! Look at the burst right there. Bambi of the forest. Really turning aggressive here. LeBonked. LeBonked. The DFG For a deer, he is not very docile. Oh, no. He's getting revenge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ever tans that, that one still hurts. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Bambi's Spoiler alert. Dies. Bambi's mom dies. Uh, here we go, guys. The jump in. Kevin in the front lines. The tank's taking so much damage. Sirius does go down one for one so far, but it's going to be into the BCM base. Another kill picked up there. Bearfish going massive. Triple kill. Looking now for Evertan. He's running. He's cowering. He's hiding. He's a Yordle. He gets away. And they're going to go ahead and push this up. Bambi's mom dies, but Bambi doesn't. Gets out of there by the skin of his teeth. And look at that. They're going to push this inhibitor. First inhibitor of the game, 27 minutes in for QG. Oh, uh, 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 the hook. Bambi You're just kicking die. him. That's not You're just movie. kicking him while he's down. <laughs> That's just mean. Uh. Well, okay, they're all right. They're all right. 15,000 gold. Here we go. QG, I, Queen Gypsies, they're going to sweep away <laughs> some of the... I like. I can't get the name in my head properly. GQ. I don't know why. They look good. Yeah, they do. They look exa... No. <laughs> I'm so done with that song. That song. Uh, Bearfish, of course, recalling as well. And here comes this fight. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, the man drop comes right down, but your soulmate's on top of that immediately with the assault battery to pick that up. Then they just collapse, and Bearfish's damage is incredible. He has been farming really well this game. He has the highest farm in the entire game, mm -hmm. and he has the most kill participation. He does. So. Actually, he, he's tied with your soulmate. So your soulmate's been bonding with him. Yes. They've been, they've been good. They've been lining up well here. Vi and Lucian. You wouldn't think they were a team, but they are here. Enforcing the law just a little bit there. Kevin getting jumped on now out of the turret. The ultimate's going to come in as well. This poor Pantheon is sad and alone, and Kevin got no one to talk to. He's going to go down. Meanwhile, Bambi did solo away Kevin, or sorry, uh, Harmer on the other side of the map. So two kills picked up now, and the siege will continue. He wants his mom's soul back. Poor Bambi. Okay, that one will give you. Yeah. So he actually DFGs him over the wall and just blows him up. Very, very quick he kill. Blue. One, two, it's over. And oh, Alliance is slow, but they're going after Everton. Big slow, a lot of CC. Everton goes down. So does Alliance. Another two for zero. This game is just exploding now. Queen Gypsy has taken 30 kills in as many minutes. minutes, And they're looking now for the push towards the Nexus. Superman is getting swept away by Ed Kenyu, but it doesn't even matter. Put nine and a half minutes in. Game one goes to Queen Gypsies from UC Irvine. And Nerves not getting them at all. Play a nope. clean game from start to finish. Very convincing. Absolutely. I mean, the level one, you say, okay, yeah, they won a level one team fight. They got first blood, but it didn't turn into many items early on. A couple of potions, that was it. It was the fact that they made plays afterwards. The Renekton and Shivana counterpick didn't pay off. You had Ponji to completely survive that lane. You had the mid lane matchup just go Bambi of the Forest way the entire time. The jungler, your soulmate, zero death the entire time. A lot of amazing performances. Yeah, and your soulmate... A lot of synergy there with all of his team all across the board. Mm -hmm. Just fantastic play. And his assault and battery, it seemed like it was on such a low cooldown. It was just he charged him up <laughs> over and over and over again. So the top lane, Kenny wasn't able to make the plays that he wanted to. True. And the playmaker of the team, when you have it in the top lane, it's far removed from the map. You have to make plays in that lane first and mm -hmm. then transition it over into other lanes. Yeah. So they had to have a different source of playmaking. Kevin True. wasn't up to the task, kept coming top. Wasn't working out from your soulmate doing work all across the map. Visited bottom, mid, top a couple times. So yep. They thought he was going to play passive, and he didn't. 
He did not. He came out exploding and knocked some heads around. Very well played there on that one. Now, guys, we've got to take a quick break and talk to Dean Pelton. But when you return, it's time for Game 2 between the Blue Caster Minions and the Queen Gypsies. Don't go anywhere. The 2014 North American Collegiate Championship will be right back. <laughs> 